for playing this here on the mic. Mostly, okay. Oh, yes. Good point. People online are oh, okay. can only hear through the mic. How about this? Okay. Smashing. Uh, hi, welcome to NetSquared Vancouver. My name is Stephanie Butler. I'm a volunteer here with NetSquared, um, along with uh, Eli, and we've got Tanya, and we've got Joel, and am I missing any volunteers? And Sam, raise your hands. <laughs> Um, we are a lovely, lovely crowd. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about technology planning for nonprofits. Um, has anybody been to a NetSquared Vancouver event before? Okay, we've got like a pretty sizable veteran crowd, which is pretty fantastic. Thank you for coming back. Um, for those of us who haven't heard of us, NetSquared is a community of nonprofit uh, professionals who are interested in communications, technology, and where those things intersect. Um, so we meet up once a month here at the Hive to talk about a different topic every month. We bring in expert speakers who are smarter than us. Um, we swap ideas, and then there's beer at the end. So it's just, it's great. Um, great. Um, before we get started, I do want to acknowledge that we are on the ancestral and unceded territories of the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. Um, and all of us as Canadians, as people who live on this land, have a responsibility to um, work to restore right relations with people who were here before we were. Uh, and that's Great Vancouver, yes. Um, we have over 3,000 members on Meetup, apparently, which is a terrific fact. Um, we're always looking for new sponsors and volunteers, so if you would like to be in front of this microphone, um, that opportunity is available to you. Um, and also for fun things like leading people to the beer, taking photos, tweeting, um, working the webcam, uh, doing promo, several volunteer opportunities, all of them excellent. Uh, washrooms um, are good to know about. Um, so if you need to uh, run away this evening, um, there's a washroom just down the hallway behind the desk. Um, that aways. If you are looking for some interwebs to do some tweeting or quietly work while somebody else is talking, um, these are the credentials you'll need. Um, after I click away from them, they're also written on the orange hexagons on the wall back there. Uh, NetSquared is part of a global network of meetups that happen in cities all over the world. So if you find yourself swapping cities, um, I actually moved here from Toronto where there was a NetSquared community there. And so it was really amazing when I moved here to, to you know, find my tribe and meet my people and uh, be able to uh, learn about new trends in a, in a new city as well. Um, as I mentioned before, it's all volunteer run. Uh, NetSquared is also affiliated with TechSoup Canada. Um, TechSoup Canada um, is a great place to source uh, nonprofit discounts on software as well as hardware. Um, if you're interested in, in applying for a discount, um, talk to Eli here, who knows everything about TechSoup. Uh, we are here in the Hive, which is a co working space, um, mostly for people who are interested in nonprofit and social impact work. So if you are finding um, yourself in need of a new place to work, maybe you want to get away from your colleagues for a day, maybe you are starting up a, a, new, a new venture, um, this is a, is a great place to make that happen. They have an open space like this. They also have dedicated office space and desks at the back, as well as meeting rooms that you can book out. Um, I'd also like to thank our, one of our sponsors, IATS Payment. So they're a payment processing service. They're based in Vancouver, which is really great. So if something um, cocks up, there's somebody nearby you can go to with your complaints or compliments. Um, and something really cool about IATS is they actually opened a co-working space in their office that's free for nonprofits to use. So if you're interested in that, check out their website. And uh, I'd also like to recognize our other sponsors, N10, which is a US-based um, technology education uh, and training network um, and website in a day. And at the very end of tonight's uh, presentation, we're going to be doing one minute community updates. So if you've got like some burning news you want to share or a new project you're working on or something you've just discovered on the internet and you think everybody needs to know about it, um, you're going to have your minute to share that excellent update. And some upcoming events. So we're going to be doing an Amazon Web Services Roadshow, um, talking about how teenagers use social media and talking about marketing goals. So you can find the details for all of those events on our meetup page and on Facebook. And after uh, my friend Joseph is done speaking tonight, there is going to be beer at the end. Um, so we're all going to be, <laughs> thanks Eli. Um, we're all going to be walking down the street. It's like a block and a half. 
Um, and uh, the first round is on our sponsors, which is terrific. Okay, and I'm going to hand things over to Joseph. Bear with me, I'm a PC user, so this might look really awkward. Be nice to me. Um, oh, okay. Great. Um, so Joseph here works for a company called Fully Managed, which has an office in Vancouver, so they do managed IT solutions. Um, fun fact about Joseph that I learned about 37 minutes ago is that he did ballet for five years. Um, he's also done street jazz uh, as well as flamenco dancing, which is terrific. Um, he has a background in client support and banking and now uh, is working in uh, account management at Fully Managed. So I'm going to turn it over to Joseph. Thanks. Hey guys, what's up? So as you can see, this body used to be full of greatness. Now not so more, this is my winter body, also my summer body, and pretty much all year round body all around. So um, this is how to develop a, a nonprofit technology plan. Now if you're not, not a nonprofit technology, blah, um, technology company, or just, you're just a company trying to figure this out, this does apply to you, it, it's just that I, uh, can I cater it towards a non-profit? So what does it look like to actually have a non-profit technology plan? As most people will like to have, it's a 10-step program. Um, what we have is we have teams, access your tech, priorities, needs, budget, vendors, timelines, training, finalize, and then get started. Are we going through this, uh, all these in a second? So the first one is, uh, establish your teams. So what does it mean to actually establish your teams? You will have a staff member, board members, and stakeholders. So what does that look like in a particular team? Uh, you will have somebody that's, um, you know, that works in the actual, uh, th let's say there's someone that actually works with the actual technology itself, and then you will have somebody that's a manager or somebody in the board members that actually um, can be able to make decisions, and then you have other stakeholders. So people that actually are affected by uh, the, the actual thing you're trying to implement. So, oh, great, I said it all, awesome. By the way, I'm kind of winging this because I wrote this up yesterday, so if you see me kind of looking back and forth, that's why. Um, yeah, okay, cool, I got that part. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of blind on one side, so I can't really look there. <laughs> so, uh, access your tech. What works well, so the second part of it is access your tech. So what is it that you're trying to figure out in your actually technology? What works well, what, is, uh, what do you do well with your technology? Uh, what aspects of our tech operation needs improvement? Are there any chronic pains in, in our tech infrastructure? So what does it actually mean? Um, I'm gonna leave it up there, I'm not actually gonna talk about it. When it means access your tech, it just basically means take a look at your company to what technology you actually are using and try to figure out what is it like that if it's the right solution for you. Because you might have been, you know, at one point in time, somebody said, hey, you know what, I read this in a magazine one time and it sounded like a great solution, we're gonna implement it. Great, now you have this technology that you implement that you spend a lot of time with, but you know, it's not really working out for you guys. So that's what it means when it access your tech. Like, I, make sure you have, like, you when you're looking at your technology, you're actually looking at your technology, not just because it's cool, but if it's the right solution for you guys. Um, so that's what I mean when it access your tech. Uh, also, one of the other things that it also mean is to figure out what do you actually have. So right here, I made a little chart for you guys. Is basically it says that your CRM, you're a customer relationship manager. Like, how is it? Is, is it easy to use? Is it up to date? Is it organized? You know, these are the things that you you may need to uh, work on, right? Even before you start even looking at. Uh, you know, vendors uh, even try and look at new technology to apply because you think that particular, you know, this technology isn't working. Why isn't it working? Ask yourself that. Like maybe you, the implementation went completely wrong. At one point it went horribly, horribly wrong. Now everything's on fire and now you're living through it, right? So what does that actually mean? Like does it mean that you have to get a specialist to be able to like, you know, teach you? how to actually use the technology, or is it that maybe you don't understand how that technology actually works, or maybe you just, I don't know, just don't use it properly. 
Um, you know, so when you have, when you make a chart like this, it really helps out to figure out for the company, like what it actually does and what you actually, your pains are. Like what is it that you're lacking and what is it that you're actually um, trying to accomplish? Does anybody have a question so far? No? Okay. Cool. It's okay, I'll just keep talking. Um, so determine your priorities. Um, okay, so determine your priorities, it basically means is figure out what is more important to you. So is it that the fact that you have, um, you know, you're, out of all the technologies you have, what is it that you, is the most painful one that you can actually try to fit? And what is the easiest one? So if for some reason your computer and, or your printer, let, let's take easy one, a printer, your printer is not working. Why is it not working? Maybe you're about too small. Maybe you, like you know, maybe it's not the right to do the job. So, you know, that's a priority right there. Maybe just fixing a printer will actually help you guys be more proactive because you actually be able to get more people to actually give the documentation. I don't know. I'm just making stuff as they go along. You're allowed to laugh if you want. <laughs> um, so identify your needs. So this is the things I was just talking about. Um, you can research the vendors later. I, for what I tell most of my clients is when you are going through your needs, is that most people what they wanna do is shoot up and be like, I need this vendor, and they start going through all the vendor, and at the end of the day, they have no idea why they're going through the vendor. They have no idea what they're looking for, and they have no idea why. So what happens? You go into a vendor, a vendor goes in there, um, a salesperson, goes in there and just tries to sell you stuff. And it says, yeah, 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 no worry about it. This is the greatest thing since sliced bread and now we're gonna sell this to you. And you're like, oh, okay, that sounds like a good idea. And then you implement it. What happens then? You probably, at that point in time, you haven't implemented, you're using it and you're like, this doesn't actually solve our issue. This doesn't actually solve what we actually probably have. Now you have a different set of issues and now you have to deal with the issues itself, right? So when you identify your needs, you're going to, all of your uh, technology that you have so far, and you're trying to figure out what is it that you're actually trying to accomplish with all this technology? What is it you're trying to actually have? Like, what is, it you, what is the main purpose behind it? And if you don't have those, it's very hard to find a vendor. And on top of that, when you're actually finding a vendor, most people that are maybe not technology savvy, not, you know, um, having know about this kind of technology, they kind of just, kind of go on a whim and they start Googling and then obviously they find things that are not there. So that's kind of why you want to identify your uh, priorities first before you even go into it. Um, so the second thing, uh, one of the, sorry, the fifth thing that I have is outline a budget. Now, a lot of companies tell me when I'm working with them, they say to me, hey, Joe, I'm like, we don't have a budget. And I'm like, why? And I'm like, cause when things break, they break and then we fix it and then eventually, you know, when we have the money, we have the money. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, so when you go home, do you, do you wait for stuff to break and then you fix it and hopefully you don't worry about it? No, right? When you go home, like if your laundry breaks or something, if you own a house, you have a budget to fix all the things. Why wouldn't you do it for your business? Like, it, uh, you know, it, it makes sense to have a budget for your business. Figure out like, you know, cause things, it's not a matter of fact if, I'm um, like, if it'll break, is when it'll break. So new hardware's come out of uh, new laptops or PCs or uh, Macs, they come out of warranty. You know, those need to be replaced at some point. You break them, you fundle them, lose them, whatever. New servers also come out of uh, warranty or they're just one point that explode. I had a client that their last server caught on fire for no reason whatsoever. So, you know, that's great. Um, <laughs> but they had a budget behind it, right? So what I, I ask you guys to do um, is to at least have a budget towards what you guys want to accomplish with the identity. You don't have to have a large budget. You don't have to have like, uh, like you don't have to have a, like a $100,000 budget or even like just enough to be able to know that, hey, you know what? These computers are going out on warranty in the last couple of years. We should put some money aside, like, you know, at least in a quarter to be like, okay, th this computer will need to be replaced eventually. Maybe you don't want to replace it right away. That's fine. But you, you need to have that kind of budget in order for you to be able to, you know, know that um, these things will be coming up, right? One of the other ones, too, is IT labor. So if you guys are actually have... Um, you know, you're actually trying to implement a new server, you're trying to implement a new whatever, 
Um, you need to have, like, there will be labor costs in there because they're consultants. They're people that, you know, just like you guys do your job, you're experts, and then we're experts in our jobs, right? Like, we know what we're doing, and um, hopefully we get paid for it. Hopefully. <laughs> yes, go for it. Mm -hmm. It's 24 months, you've got 20 months of this contract. It's really hard to get into. Um, but I think sometimes people don't always budget for like staff training. Yep. Um, like who's going to pay for it? Yep. Um, like how much is the organization um, that you budget for that? Well, well I'm going to talk about it in a second, but uh, <laughs> uh, basically, to answer the question, it depends on the program itself. Normally, the vendor, if they're doing a good job and if you have a pro, um, if you have a technology partner like an MSP or a consultant, they would normally, if they're smart enough and they actually do the right job, they will be able to tell you that up ahead of time. Um, it, it really depends because sometimes to do a really good implementation, you really need to figure out what kind of users you're having and what to teach them. Like, no, there shouldn't be a cookie cutter version of training for any particular software ever. And if they, someone gives you a cookie cutter version of training, they probably don't know what they're doing and you probably run away. <laughs> that just, uh, that scares me because that, that means they tell me they have no idea what the users are doing. They have no idea what they're as the users actually be using it for. And that should not be the case. Like when Microsoft comes trains most of our clients, they'll be like, okay, they will actually ask a question. How much do you know about this? Okay, great. Now they get a feel for the room. And then based on that, then they start going and training people but they're not gonna go in there and be like, just train you from the ground up because that's inefficient and you're probably gonna get bored and not listen, right? So, you know, it really depends on it. And normally training usually doesn't come with a cost if they're trying to sell you a product, no, most of the time, unless it's a very specific something proprietary. So um, it really depends. And what was I saying? Research tech vendors. Oh, awesome. Okay. so. When uh, you're talking about research uh, tech vendors, for nonprofit, one of the back things is usually money that comes along. Now, um, most of my clients, when they talk to me and they tell me, it's like, hey, Joe, I'm like, you know what? We can't spend that much money, but you know, I, I used to be a consultant back in the day. And when that happened, I used to tell people, I'd be like, fine. I'm like, maybe you don't wanna spend that much money. Here are three solutions for you. And then they'll come back to me you'll be able, and then they'll implement one of the cheaper ones. And they'll come back to me, it's like, it's not working. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm like, remember how I told you about that that solution wasn't the best one? How this wasn't gonna solve all your issues? They're like, yeah. I'm like, well, that's the reason. And they're like, oh, well, what can we do about it now? Well, now you can pay more money to actually get the right solution. Or you can stick with what you have right now and hopefully like, you know, it, it will be what it is. One of the best examples I like to use is that somebody, um, back when I used to work in one of the companies, somebody bought a router. They went to Best Buy or somewhere, I don't know where they bought, they brought a router or Wi-Fi to be able to implement in the company. I told them it will cost them $1,500 uh, to be able to implement this Wi-Fi access, which is what they needed because there was a lot of people, blah, blah. It was a lot of reasons behind it. They're like, no, 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 I can buy one for 25 bucks. And I'm like, okay, cool. So usually what I do with most clients, I usually let them do whatever they need to because I'm not gonna win. There's no way I'm gonna win with whatever logic they decided to use against me, right? So I'm just like, you know what? Go implement it, see how it goes. And then fair enough, like a week later, they, they're like, it's not working. And I'm like, uh-huh, and why? He's like, because I bought it at Best Buy. I've been like, okay, well, you need this. They're like, well, I'm not gonna spend more money. I'm like, well, you should listen to me in the first place. You're the one that hired me. And, I'm, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, I guess. So that's what I mean when, uh, you know, when most people look at money, do you really want something that be able to just kind of do the job or do you want to be able to do something that actually does the job properly and able to help you out with your business? Because at the end of the day, it's more of the long-term um, solution and then actually the short-term. It's not like a stock market where you like, you know, invest low and get high profession. No, no, no. It's like you invest low, you get nothing. <laughs> That's basically how it works. So, um, yeah, money is a big deal. And I know some of them are, like, you know, for nonprofit, it, it is a huge, but also look at it in the way of if you don't invest that money, then you're kind of wasting your money away anyways. And it's not gonna give you the result that you actually want. Um, so, and again, with usually more money comes more consolidation, it comes more user friendliness, 
and you know it really depends so usually you want to be in between these ones these are the ones that you want to go and like in between here um mostly because those are like the you know it will give you most bang for your buck um aside from that if you just go all the way to the top eh, you know you, you might 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 not need that and it's just normally when you have when you're going through uh the process of it your vendor or your msp provider or your technology or your consultant they will tell you what the right solution for you is it's up to you to decide that if this is actually the right solution you're willing to pay for it right any questions so far no okay sounds like no one here is willing to pay for it right? exactly it is so exactly what you said like knowing you what you actually need it makes anybody's job simple because i can go in there and be like you need this great no problem let me get it for you but if you don't know what you need someone could come in here and be like you need this and you'd be like well do i really and they're like yeah yeah totally totally yeah not, not sketchy at all like and just come in there and like you know just sell you pretty much a tree branch when you actually need a whole tree like so it's it's important to have those things thank you so much stephanie um so develop a timeline so this is one of the things that people don't look into um, when and this is more of when you're strategizing to figure out what you actually want to do so when you're creating a budget you're creating a long-term plan you're creating a short-term plan and all the things you want to create an actual timeline of what it's actually gonna look like and the reason you do that is so you actually know how far it will take because sometimes um, when projects and you don't have a project manager or you don't have a project coordinator or you just don't know about projects you what you tend to do is implement the project and it keeps going. It's a keep going project and it never stops. And it's an ongoing project that ran for three years because you never decided this is the finish, this is the end, this is the scope, this is how you do it, and we're gonna finish at this point. Now, anything after that could be another project, but most companies, what they do, even large companies have this tendency, or even the government, um, to just keep going with the actual project nonstop for like the rest of their lives and it just never stops. So why is it important? Well, because you want it to stop at some point. You just don't want it to, like when you have that stop, you know what's wrong and you're able to be like, okay, you know what? All the stuff didn't work. Let's make a new project line to actually make things, like all the things that we failed that are before, now we can fix them. Now we can go back and make a new project and start fixing the actual things that we actually need. <clears throat> Consider training. So this is the training part. <laughs> so when you have any particular software or any vendors that come into it, there's always, most of the time, you do get free training with most of the programs you do, unless it's something very, very specific, which nowadays I don't think that's, a, that's the model anymore because now you pay monthly as opposed to um, just one big you know, pile of like, here's 20 grand give me the program, blah, blah. Most of the time you just pay monthly, so training usually comes up, well, it comes with the actual program itself. Um, you know, and this depends on a lot of what you wanna do with your actual training. So if you're implementing an actual program, you know, after figuring out like what's your timeline, what's your scope, what's your, like, you know, how you're gonna implement all the things, now you know that you're gonna need for training. Now you know that you need like, okay, maybe Betty down the street or down the corner, like is not really that smart when it comes to computer, but she's really good in accounting, not that great with a computer. So she'll need a lot of training, right? So, you know, now that you have these needs and you know what you're actually doing, you can actually budget for this and comes the budgeting line again to be able to be like, okay, or if you don't want to go with any of that, there's always free training online. But that means that somebody in the committee that you guys already set up have to take on that, you know, that training role where they will have to learn everything and then from there train it over to the, uh, to the rest of the people uh, in, order f in, in order to the get for them to be able to get the, you know, the training that is needed and that person will become the uh, SME, I think is uh, the term, a um, uh, person that really knows, our, knows it all. So, uh, thank you. Jesus, I'm tired. Yeah, that's I, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> so yeah, you have a uh, captain hook, um, <laughs> and then you have draft your plan. Um, so I would say you did everything else, and you're having a great old time with everything else you would 
draft your plan. So what does it look like? You have the overview. So the overview is really important if you want to present it to somebody else. Um, you have your immediate solutions. So what is it that you can, right now, at this moment, you can actually fit without doing anything else that you might not need. So can you fix a printer? Great, go fix it. Like, can you fix the, the thing that nobody knows how to use? Yeah, okay, we just need a little more training. Awesome. Like, now you know what you actually are doing. And then from there, you have long-term plans. So like, okay, now that we fit everything else and we know what we're doing, what is our plans? What is it we're trying to implement? What is it we're trying to accomplish? What is it that we're, you know, what are we doing? Like, basically. And then you have your uh, tools and vendors. Uh, tools and vendors, I'll talk about a little bit more. Uh, budget and then you have your timeline and you have your training process so now you're gonna get all started up so what does that mean after all this magical being through the land of figuring crap out um, sorry uh, <laughs> you have your technology assessment and audit now an MSP if you don't know what an MSP is a managed service provider that's what I work for um, normally there's two ways to be able to no so when you have a small company, there is two ways you'll be able to uh, assess your IT. Either A, hire one guy uh, to do your IT, which means that that person will just sit there and basically figure out how not to get stuff broken. That is the only job. Um, that is called a system administrator. I used to do that before, and my only job was to make sure the thing didn't break. And make, I, I didn't do any planning, I didn't do any you know, future planning. It wasn't, that's not a job of a system administrator or a technical person. So normally when you have these kind of people, I'm not saying to do it by jobs, I'm just saying that normally most companies says, hey, I need an IT person. Okay, I'm gonna hire an IT person from school and then they just start working there. And all they're doing is, you know, break fits. So something breaks, they fix it. Something breaks, they fix it. Are they really looking after your company or are they just trying to figure stuff out in the same place? They're probably just trying to figure things out. And that's not a bad thing, but the thing is that when you have a company and you're trying to figure out how to actually run a company, you need an actual person that knows what they're doing. And most people can't, like most companies cannot, you know, have a consultant that pay them 150 bucks an hour. So what they do is they hire an MSP. And MSP basically does all the things I just said to you. Um, and they have people, experts in there for a lower price that you normally would pay for an IT system uh, person. So that is a managed service provider. Anybody questions about that? Or any, nothing? Okay, great. Um, okay, so as strategy development, normally with an MSP you would, uh, or a consultant, you would have somebody going through all the steps. So now that you have all the information, you can go to a consultant or an MSP provider and be like, hey, this is our terms. How do we do it? What is it that we need? Like, how do we accomplish all the things that we do? How do we get the vendors? Because I have no idea what to do with vendors. I have no idea, like, you know, which vendor is the best one? What are the best technologies? What are the best practices? Like, you know, just operational wise, how is it that, like, how do we operate with all this information that we just had? We did the best that we could. Now, can you please come to us? So normally you will have a consultant or an MSP provider with that. Um, so vendor research and recommendations. An MSP and a consultant already have those in the back of their hand because you deal with them every single day. They, they're the ones that they actually have. Um, you know, they, I, for me, like I used to deal with a bunch of vendors all the time. I always recommend certain vendors when I was working for myself. I didn't make any profit of it. I didn't make any money out of it. But the thing is, is that I knew it was easy for me to support. As a system administrator or just a tech guy, we're lazy. I'm talking about really, really lazy and in a good way because we don't want to make a job harder. We want to make it as easy as possible to, for, for us to support you. And the way we do it is that we implement technology that's really easy for us to use, hard for you, but easy for us <laughs> in order for us to get you to like be like, okay, they're not really yelling at me. That's awesome. That's great. I can sit back and not be yelled at and not be like running around like a chicken cut off in my head. So that is basically vendor research recommendation. Uh, unless you actually deal with it on a daily, daily basis, I highly recommend a consultant and MSP. Um, you know, they can help you out with those kind of things, right? Uh, then you have comprehensive training. <clears throat> comprehensive training. So uh, with your training, usually most MSP providers and not consultant, but MSP providers will have, um, would have already a training available to them involved in that particular thing that they're trying to sell you or tr you're trying to implement. So we already have, like they already, they already have a particular, um, 
data and we already have a bunch of customers that these are the things that we need to train them on and we'll just pass it on to you and it's usually no cost involved uh, with that so as long as you work with an MSP you already have that training involved you don't have to really worry about that particular part of it and get somebody like you know like easily pick a straw and then that they have to go figure out how to learn it right so the next thing is custom technology service these when it comes to specialized configurations or just programs or apps that you require for your business that are very specialized for your business and how they run. So uh, unless you have somebody that knows how the technology works and uh, why is it that you're working this way, you will not get this from, uh, even a consultant will just, I, I don't believe that uh, we'll be able to give you that bang a buck because as a consultant, you're there mostly there to implement technology. You're not really there to figure out the technology if, and that makes any sense uh, yeah so with an MSP provider you most likely know that like okay we have a bunch of people they have these programs this is what they do this is how they use it they're not usually in the best practice so we will talk to you about that and be like hey you know what I'm like this is the way we should be implementing this technology behind it um, so and more importantly the right technology partner can guide you to the entire technology planning process and basically what that means is that normally all the stuff that I talked about and, you know, get you started, get you go up and going, like, and just as long as you're willing. So one of the main things that I have, um, mostly because I'm a technical account coordinator, is that we tell people, like, we tell clients, like, hey, you need to do this. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then two days later, like a week later, they'll be like, yeah, my thing broke down. And I'll be like, okay, well, remember that conversation we had? They're like, yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah. Oh, my bad. And I'm like, mm, okay. Well, if you're going to hire somebody like, and you're paying them, listen to them. Um, that's just my only recommendation because I, I get a lot of like, people not listening, <laughs> which I find it really weird because if you're paying me to do something, I find it really weird that you're not actually listening. So that's one of the things. So just a uh, recommendation, you know, and they can also help you guys through the whole thing if you work with them as a partnership because most things uh, as a consultant or MSP, you're working with them as a partner. They're not trying to screw you over. Uh, they're not trying to like, you know, trying to make a buck out of you. They're not trying to, they basically, all they're trying to do is make their life as easy as possible while supporting you. And that is literally the only goal that we have uh, as an MSP or as a consultant, because we don't want to make our life harder, just like you don't want to make your life harder in your job, right? So that, that's one of the things. Uh, so how do you find a good MSP or a partner? Uh, this is one of the important things that I get asked a lot. Um, so they have a successful track record. What does that mean? Do they have, like, how many years have they been in the business? What do the clients look like? What is it like? How many people do they have in the office to be able to support you? Is it a 24 seven? Do they have like five people? And, and like they say, I'm an MSP and there's like literally three people in the office. And one of them is a salesperson slash CEO slash 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 and then you have one field tech and you have one help this guy is that a really good MSP? no right like you want to have somebody that actually knows like that has at least like a good amount of people have been doing this for quite a while knows what they're doing and actually have like an actual understanding of the business not just saying they're an msp so uh able to pro provide digital transformation so you probably guys heard about digital transformation a lot because it's a buzzword and it's amazing and it's, everybody's using it. Digital transformation just basically means transform your computer into something that makes sense. That's all it means. Um, and then you have proactive management and strategy. So when you have an MSP provider or you have a consultant, uh, if you hire the right consultant at least, you they will be able to help you manage those um, your management and your strategy, like they manage manage your actual infrastructure and come up with a strategy to be able to say, hey, you know what? In six months, this server is coming out of warranty. You need to replace it. So in six months, you need to come up with a budget for this because how important is your data? I always ask, that's my number one question to people. They're like, I don't want to replace it. I'm like, okay, how important is your data? Important. So why won't you replace it? Mm, because I don't have money. Well, make some. Like, go put it aside. You go buy. I had a client that, um, <laughs> I had a client that is into construction they just literally bought a $12 million semi truck, like in one of the mines that they have, and they didn't want to spend $5,000 on a server where all the data is stored. And I, and I, I called it on and I'm like, hey, I'm like, you just bought a, you just told me you bought a $12 million truck. I'm like, you don't want to spend $5,000? How does that, 
like makes sense and they're like oh yeah you're right okay and then then they started like thinking about it in a different kind of perspective right so think of it what's important to your company is your data important to you then you probably should be looking into something into it right so i'm going to be talking about uh, digital transformation in a second of what it actually looks like um, and deliver service using fully integra uh, fully integrated technology uh, what that means is that basically it, the MSP, the MSP provider will normally have everything integrated um, on the background with them knowing what football could happen and have everything. They basically, and I'm sorry, for, uh, they have the stuff together. They, they have it well together to the point that if you ask them any question, they'll be able to go anywhere and be like, yep, I got this information. Yep, no problem, I got this. If they don't have that, I'd be a little bit concerned. So, what uh, what does the digital transformation look like? So this is a really fun slide um, um, that I personally made. So right now we have your, usually what it looks like for a company, any company, doesn't matter what it is, you usually have this. You have your email server, uh, you have your database server, app server, file server, ADDNS server, um, and then you have a workstation and you have your like your routers, your and you have your access point. Um, now, Normally, this either be a server or a computer, uh, meaning like a little tower at the bottom somewhere, or you might not have any of this. I don't know. Like it's it, each uh, nonprofit is very different. So, but what it looks like, right? Um, so right now, you go, you have internet, and you have fully managed on the left side. Yes. Um, so, to answer that question is, I, t me personally, I hate Google uh, for any company, uh, anything that doesn't have to do with, because Google is not private. So again, how important is your data? I I'm asking. So to answer the question, that like you normally wouldn't have, yeah, you can use this free providers, but the thing is, is that how much do you care about your data? Because if you're not paying for it that much, who's the customer? You or them? You. You're the customer because you're, you're basically their data. The data mining you. That's all they're doing. That's what Google. Mine, that's why you get such cheap rates. Because what they do is they um, they data mine all your information in order to be able to get more information about the clients. So with Microsoft Office or Exchange, you normally don't have that because they're not in the business of trying to sell your advertisement. So it's like how much you care about your data, how much you care about your email, how much you care about privacy. Like if you don't care about any of those things, yeah, go for it, go to Google. Like it doesn't affect anybody, but it's really hard to manage. It's horrible when it comes to data protection and it's just, a nightmare when trying to get anything out of it. So I, I don't recommend it, and I hopefully nobody hears on Google Gmail. Yeah? Yep. So they have their own version of uh, uh, their version of like data, how they pro progress it. And in order to migrate it over, it's just, it's just horrible and it's just a pain. Um, no company or no MSP, no consultant will ever tell you to go to Google um, or any other free based or even Dropbox uh, to use it because they're not, um, they're not something that is manageable and it's not something that is business ready. Um, when I mean by business ready, it means that, yeah, you can use it and you can, uh, and it does great, but it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. And it's really hard and there's, it comes a lot of headaches and a lot of support. And if you know, most people will move away from that. And it's not, not even that expensive to have uh, Microsoft Office. It costs like $12 and you get one terabyte in your OneDrive. And you get Exchange and you get Microsoft Office Suite. I don't know why you wouldn't use it and everything's secure in the cloud. So 
to answer your question, don't use it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Exactly. Oh yeah, that, that's a great point. Thank you so much. It's um, so one of the HIPAA. If you're under the HIPAA convention, which is basically the Canadian government to that makes up, uh, you have to be in a Canadian server. Google doesn't provide um, a way for you to be able to move your servers to Canada. It's in the cloud. It means it's somewhere, either in U.S., Europe. It's somewhere, somewhere in, in some country, somewhere. Uh, with Microsoft Office, you can actually tell it to move to the Canadian uh, government. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Yeah, Appreciate yeah, it. Customer data, right? Only your customer data has to be on Canadian servers. What do you mean by customer data? Yeah, personal information. Yeah, yeah. Your, cust uh, your customer's personal information has to be on Canadian servers. Uh, it doesn't have to be your email, right? No, it has to be your email. So your email, in, in order for you to be in, so it, th this is the way it works. In order for you to be able to be in a Canadian server, your email has to be in a Canadian server. Y you can't get it both ways. You can't have a U, like, you can't have your email address located in a US server and then have your data saved in a Canadian. Like, because your exchange server, like, this is more technical, but your exchange server basically will have to be inside the country that you want it to be on. Does that make sense? Yeah, so basically, okay, so, yeah, sure. Um, so what does it look like to have the right digital, any more questions? No? No? Okay, great. So what does it look like to have a digital transformation? You got fully managed, which is my company, yay. And then you have a cloud services. Now, what does it mean to have a cloud services? So anything that goes in the cloud, anything that can be managed over the cloud. The cloud basically means is that you have something, you have a client, and then it connects to somewhere in the cloud um, that could be anywhere, it doesn't really matter what it is, and that is something that we have. So you have your silence, which is your um, <clears throat> antivirus, and then you have your data backup. So your data backup is one of the things that you would have if you have, like right now, if you notice, none of these servers are being backed up. So what does it mean for your data? What happened if one of them were to crash? How, how would you be able to survive if, let's say, your email server were to crash? How important is your email server? Is it extremely important? Is it okay important? Like, you know, some companies don't really care because they usually use most phones. Other companies just live off of email, like, you know, email servers. So you have your data backup, which will be able to uh, spin up a server and be able to do redundancy behind it. Now you have an actual, like, and now you're transforming your, comp your company into a digital backup. Uh, sorry, into a digital transformation. Second thing, you have Cisco Meraki. So before you were using HP switches, you were using or some random switch you decided to buy online because you decided that th this will be good things that were cheap enough and you were able to do um, you know, what you needed to, which is basically connect a bunch of users. But here's the thing you forgot. How are you gonna manage them? What happens if you need to make rules? What happens if you need to make, what happens if somebody, uh, you know, someone tries to hack into your network? What happens if somebody does anything in your network? How are you gonna find out that those things are happening without you knowing a lot of things, right? So now this is, you have your Cisco Meraki um, switches and firewall, which is helping you uh, with an MSP provider, which is us, helping you identify those things that normally you wouldn't be able to see because either you don't have time or because you're not knowledgeable enough or because you have an IT person that might or might not be, is just trying to do break fixes, you know? So what's the next step? After that, you have your Cisco umbrella and Simply Security and Scalar. What does that mean? So now everything is, uh, Cisco umbrella has just had to do with security. So you have your DNS protection, you have your phishing, um, uh, phishing uh, cryptoware, um, basically anything that could attack your uh, actual company. So, and again, I keep asking the question, I know it sounds redundant, how much do you care about your data? <laughs> because most people, like when they, they care, it's like, oh no, no, I'll be fine with phishing. I totally know what it is. Do anybody know what phishing is? I'm guessing they know what a phishing is. Thing. Sorry. Okay, you're, okay, so you guys know what, okay. So a phishing email is basically an email that looks like it's an email from somebody in your company or something that looks legit from either a bank or somewhere and you basically ask you to click on something so they can get your, pass, your email password, your email and your password or your username and your password with the information they can log in, they can start sending emails on your behalf 
you wouldn't even notice because they'll create a bunch of rules and it will take you about a week to figure that out. You, roughly, that's how long it takes. So phishing emails are normally, you know, like uh, usually we have something that protect you, uh, pro bleh, protect you against these things, right? So uh, what is the digital transportation coming on nets? Oh, look at that. So now you have your exchange server, and I forgot what other server that was. Oh, your uh, file server. Um, now it's gone. Now it went to Office 365. So Office 365 has a OneDrive. Now, as I said before, it costs you like, what, $12 to get the business license? And I think you get a discount with uh, Ellie for... Actually, I think TechSoup that uh, exchange Office 365 is 100% free. Yeah, well, there you go. That, why wouldn't you go with them? Like, now you have your... You don't need to have an actual exchange server on-premises. You just go online. You can access your email anywhere around the world, doesn't matter what it is, because now you have it up on the line, and you have your OneDrive. So your OneDrive is your file server. So all your files that are currently on your, uh, on your actual, um, what's it called, on your computer, now it's actually OneDrive on your SharePoint. What that means is that you can access those files and work from anywhere uh, along the lines. Now, let's see which one says appears. Okay, so, <laughs> great. Um, the FM Cloud, so the FM Cloud, it's a private cloud. What does that mean? Basically, you will get the same servers that you have before, your AD, your database server, your app server, and you will have them on a private cloud. A private cloud, all it is, is basically you have the same servers you normally had, but now you have them somewhere up in the cloud, and it's private, meaning nobody else can access it, but your company and your, and there's, there's a bunch of security behind it, but basically it's integrated, so only you can access it because you have firewalls and you have like access points and things that I don't understand that's beyond my level of pay. <laughs> okay, cool. And oh, there you go. And then optimize efficiency via Office 365 and Teams and SharePoint. I just talked about. Um, and that's it. So, does anybody else have any questions or anything else? No. Sure. Yeah. going through the planning cycle. Um, I'm wondering if you've seen any interesting templates that we might be able to use to sort of just guide some of that planning as we begin the process. I haven't actually seen any templates, but I can look for you guys for templates if you like, and I can send it to you later. Sure. Um, yeah. I don't, uh, like what kind of templates you like looking for? Well, you know, basically you have like the five, you know, the 10 steps. Yeah. Oh, like an, an actual, like, you know, writing down the, the people. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I understand. Like guide me through the process. Okay, cool. Yeah, I can come up with that. I can come up with one, uh, or I can find one. I'm not sure if there is one out there, but I can come up with that oh, one. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. Any more questions? Anything else? No? Okay, awesome, guys. You guys are amazing. Like, you have just nothing. <laughs> Literally nothing. <laughs> there you go, that's a laugh. Awesome. Okay, thanks so much, guys. I appreciate it. If you guys want my cards or if you want to know more fully managed, I do have some cards with me. Just please let me know. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Maybe. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I'm in Texas. Okay, command tab. Okay, you say that, and I'm like, play? Is that what I need to do? Nailed it. Ah, smashing. Okay. Uh, yes, so now that uh, that's all wrapping up, we're going to be heading over to Darby's for drinks. Um, we'll just need maybe two volunteers to stick around and help us clean up the food and put away some chairs. And then, um, so group one will go over to the bar and claim the best seats. Um, group two will linger to do a little bit of cleanup and then join group one at the bar. Um, so if that sounds great to you. Yes, can we go? Yes, that might be the next slide. <laughs> yes, the one minute community updates. Um, so the way this works is you get to come up to the front and you get to take this microphone from me and enjoy the power of it um, and give your one minute updates. That might be a nifty event you've got coming up or um, you're looking for a mentor or a partner on a project or a consultant, for, for example, or you found this really cool tool on the internet that you think everybody here needs to, to learn about. 
Um, so, Eli, do you want to model a community update? Sure, I would. I knew you would. So it's going to go a little bit like this. You basically start off and go with, with your names. Do you say like, hi, my name's Eli. I'm with Net Squared Vancouver. And then you go right into your ask. So it, for me, my ask is to say like, today we're really lucky to have a photographer documenting this event. Because look at us, we're all super attractive. But most of the time, we have no photographers. These are sad days. So the thing I'm looking for is someone who would be delighted to come in and do some photography at some of our events. If you're curious, come chat with me. I'll also be at the pub today. All right. Anybody else would like to give a community update? Come on. Don't be shy. Start a lineup. All right. I do not. Okay. Hello, my name is Krista. I'm the career advisor for Cornerstone International Community College. Uh, I have two little community updates. One of them is actually related to this event, but two months ago. Uh, two months ago, I met the marketing director for Fundraiser, and she actually hired two of my students to be digital marketing interns. Oh. So thank you for facilitating that connection. So they're getting some social media experience, so that way when they start their co-op opportunities, they'll have some volunteer experience with a fundraising position. So thank you very much for that. Uh, the second thing is, uh, so we have a partnership with New Ventures BC. New Ventures BC has a grant that can help tech companies, startups, including nonprofits, hire a student who's going to a college in BC and get up to a $10,000 grant towards their salary. So our students at Cornerstone are eligible for that. It can be a business position or a tech position. So if you are looking to do any hiring and would like to talk to me about that, I'd be more than happy to stick around and go for beers and chat more. So thank you. Great. And I'm going to put that down. Hi. My name is Tanya. I help volunteer to run this gig. Um, and I wanted to let you guys know that our annual conference is coming up and we just opened registration a couple of weeks ago. It's called the Digital Nonprofit. You've probably all gotten emails about it, but you should come. It's a lot of fun. We have a grand time. We learn lots of amazing things. There's even a social networking that has a little bit of beer and wine if you're interested in that sort of aspect for the net networking as well. And we'd love to see you all there. It's great. Oh, it's on uh, June 11th. Sorry, and, and you have probably gotten emails about it. <laughs> Hi there, my, e my Eli, I have one more ask. So uh, as one of the planners of the digital nonprofit, we are actually looking for some case studies or presentations. So maybe you're a nonprofit who's done something really interesting around digital transformation, around your digital marketing, around your fundraising. Maybe you know someone who's doing that work. We are looking for five nonprofit leaders with case studies that were about 25 minutes a piece. So if you think you've got a story that might be a great fit for a conference, come chat with me. Woo. Ooh, sorry. Uh, hi, my name is Prash. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Tech Samurais. We're a digital agency in Vancouver. Um, just a thing, a tool that I think maybe some of you can benefit from, uh, Google Data Studio. I'm not sure if any of you guys do data visualizations, but it connects to any spreadsheets that you have in Google and makes nice graphs and charts that update automatically. Uh, second tool I'll probably say is Slack. Slack is great for communication, so it's free again, so probably check that out too. Um, yeah, and if you guys have other questions about tech, uh, you can come and ask me as well. Thanks. Cool, yeah, that's really great. And actually, side note on, uh, Slack is, once again, as nonprofits, you can apply and pretty much everyone gets it for the 100 sort of full pro licenses to get you one step past the, uh, the basic service. Um, that'd be great, and I would like to learn a lot more about um, the, the data studio because I've been using uh, Fusion Tables and they're about to shut it all down. So uh, where can I go to learn about that? Uh, is someone yeah, doing a meetup uh, on that?
Let's talk. I got spreadsheets and I'm not very smart. Perfect. <laughs> Anyone else got a thing? Oh, come on up. All right. Um, I'm Jeff. I'm uh, a contractor or owner of uh, my company, TX Swiss Tech, which is an MSP that I'm trying to start up. Um, I have lots of experience with IT infrastructure and stuff like that, and I'm also familiar with a lot of Microsoft stuff and also programming. So I'm kind of want to be in. I'm in the middle between infrastructure and development, so automation kind of stuff. One project I had done was for a uh, school to automate uh, spreadsheets to uh, modify the, the spreadsheet or add information or manipulate the data. So that's some of the things I kind of do. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, no, those are the kinds of case studies I'm always curious to learn more about. So uh, yeah, come talk with me afterwards. Always love to find out more about that. Awesome. Hey guys, my name is Joel. Um, I uh, create content for nonprofits. I have my own marketing agency doing that. But uh, if this uh, if this sounds like you, if you provide services to nonprofits or social impact businesses, I would love to chat with you. Uh, me and some friends have started a group called the Good Work Society, and um, it's a group of service providers for. Uh, businesses and organizations that are doing good and uh, just for us to network and, and meet with each other and, and talk about uh, the uh, the journey of helping businesses organizations nonprofits uh, do good in the world so uh, if you're interested if that fits what you do whether you're a consultant a marketing person a freelancer a photographer a creative writer um, anything like that come chat with me and uh, I'd love to talk with you thanks great Um, N10 has uh, re-released their Tech Accelerate tool. So N10 is one of our partners, and their Tech Accelerate tool is, um, it's a questionnaire that you fill out online. It helps benchmark you on different technology maturity um, categories and indexes. It's completely free to use. Um, so if you are thinking about starting a tech plan, it's a really fantastic resource to kind of get a feel for um, where you're currently at, um, what are some things you could do next, um, and then what training might be available to get you there. Could I use this to shame my boss into making investments? Well, if you got a letter D grade in something, that might be quite motivating. Um, another strategy I've heard of for convincing your boss to invest in things is if you tie your tech investments to your mission. So if you're in the business of you know, providing immigrant services, then you might need a really good CRM and perhaps an app that's available in multiple languages and you know, doesn't fail. So if you're able to present a case for why that's important to delivering your services, that can help make that case. Good point. Cool. Um, all right. Any other community updates? Okay. Um, all right. Cool. Do we have two volunteers to stick around and help put away chairs and food? Okay. That looks like five. Brilliant. Cool. We're going to move very quick through them. Perfect. <laughs> um, and do we have uh, one volunteer who can help lead people to the bar? All right. Perfect. Okay. Jeff. Jeff. You know where we're going? No. Nope. Well, it should be that. <laughs> <laughs> You should go yeah. with Jeff. Go. Perfect. Train Jeff.